All right, so we all know that there are options when it comes to choosing our web browsers, but I wanna know if one is superior than the other. I mean, if you're on Apple, you probably stick to Safari, and if you're on Windows, then you probably only use Edge to download Chrome. But as a Mac user, I wanna know which is better and which is gonna make my experience better. And I actually talked about this in a previous video, but I was wrong. But first, Let's talk Chrome versus Safari. As always, timestamps are gonna be down below, so let's start off with the basics. So when it comes to the basics of a web browser, I feel like every browser should be getting this right because if it's not, then, then that's a pretty big issue. So can you search the web? And I mean, this is pretty simple. For Chrome, the answer is yes, and for Safari, the answer is yes as well, but I think we need to go a little bit deeper than that. See, because both these browsers have a bunch of different features and different things that make them stand out when compared to each other. So next up is the frustrations versus the pleasures. So when it comes to using Safari on Mac, there are a lot of things that make it better than Chrome. First of all, probably the most obvious is the fact that it syncs across all your Apple devices. It uses things like your Apple ID and your iCloud to just make it so seamless from searching something up on your phone to searching that up on your computer. And speaking of being synced with iCloud, I think that this is actually such an underrated feature of Safari because the fact that you can sync with iCloud is really, really nice, especially when it comes to things like the screen times feature where you can put locks on certain websites or even uh, the fact that you can have your passwords auto fill in. That is such a huge thing for me and I've been using it a ton. Not to mention, you know all those annoying verification codes that you have to enter in on certain websites? Safari makes this so easy and it's kind of amazing that you actually pull it straight from your iMessage or straight from wherever you got it sent and auto fills it into Safari. Now this only works again if you're using iMessage, but the fact that it works so seamlessly is pretty amazing. Next up is speed. Safari is just straight up fast. I mean, it's made by Apple. It's working on an Apple device. I mean, you can already tell the combination of those two things together just makes it run really, really fast, no matter what you're doing. And I think that's especially important for a browser because the last thing that you want is to be waiting around for things that should feel instantaneous. And finally, safety. If there's something that Apple is good at that probably doesn't get talked about enough is the fact that Safari is so safe. And with this last update, they really prioritized that because they added things like letting you know what websites are tracking you, giving you all that information clearly laid out. It's really, really transparent and it just makes you feel so safe on the web. But obviously Safari isn't perfect. And here are some of the frustrations. So the biggest thing for me is the lack of extensions. And as a student, extensions just come in so handy for making us more productive, save more time and stay focused. I actually have an entire video talking about my favorite extensions and you should probably check that out because I go through just how useful they are. And the fact that Apple kind of neglected them, I mean, now they're starting to get integrated and it's really relying on the third party makers to get those extensions into Safari. The fact that you have, there, the fact that there's this entire process just goes to show the lack of extension support still in 2021. And again, I'm not completely blaming Apple because they have opened it up so that developers can add their extensions to Safari, but this update came out months ago and there's still such a lack of support for extensions. Next up is the lack of control. If you're somebody that likes to customize your entire homepage, make it look completely different, make it maybe optimize more for what you do, then you're not really gonna find that with Safari. And again, if you watched my previous Safari update video, then you know that they have added things to make it more customizable. But I mean, in comparison to Chrome, with some of the things that we're gonna talk about later, it really doesn't compare. And finally, the lack of compatibility. I mean, it's pretty important to mention that Safari is only built for Apple. And if you're a student like me that used to go in school and use computers in the library or have Chromebooks or things like that, then you know 99% of them, you're gonna be using Chrome. So what that means is that there's gonna be a disconnect from what you're using on your personal machine between what you're using at school. And for some things, that can be a hindrance. So now, let's Let's talk about Chrome, starting off with some of the pleasures. So the first pretty obvious thing is the integration with Google services. I mean, you're watching this on YouTube, so you have a Google account. And using Chrome makes it really convenient to take advantage of these different services, like checking out your Google Docs or your Google Slides or even YouTube. Not to mention you can combine this by having different instances of Google accounts, like your personal accounts that you use for YouTube and your school account. Having that direct integration between Chrome and the Google services makes this really, really compelling, especially as a student. Next up, probably the best part of Google Chrome is the extensions and the extension store. Not only do they make it extremely easy to add extensions to your browser, but they also have a huge 
huge store that you can just choose between if you want things to make you more productive or if you want to pick out certain YouTube videos or if you want distraction free YouTube and you don't want to see any videos at all. Really the extensions are endless and you can really customize it to make it better suit your needs. And finally the control and the customizations. You really do have a lot of control of the browser itself and when you combine that with powerful extensions you can have a really really good browsing experience. But now come the many faults of Google Chrome. All right, so straight up, Google Chrome turns my laptop into an airplane. I mean, as soon as you open the application, the fans kick in, the laptop gets extremely hot and noisy, and it's just a terrible browsing experience. Not only does it run slower than Safari in comparison, but it also slows down just everything else in general, even if it's not at all related to browsing. Next up is something that is definitely worth mentioning, and that is the security and the privacy. Now, this isn't something that really bothers me because I'm already in so deep uh, with the Google services because of my school, but it's worth mentioning because simply put, Apple security is 10 times better than Chrome's. Google's at that. Another big thing for me is the loss of Apple integration. Things like your keychain of passwords and uh, auto filling in many of those verification forms. Those are things that are super convenient and you just don't find that on Chrome. And finally, Chrome just takes up a lot of space. The application size itself is really big considering what you're getting. And if you're somebody like me that doesn't have a ton of storage, that's gonna eat away a lot of it. So of these two competitors, which is the better deal? Well, if you're somebody that really takes advantage and likes extensions, no matter all the faults and flaws that Chrome has, I still cannot recommend that you use Safari. But I was like that too. I mean, you guys have literally seen the video where I talk about my favorite extensions for Chrome, but even I have found a way to simplify down and work without some of those more niche uh, extensions that I had while maintaining productivity. And if you aren't at all worried about extensions or anything that I just talked about, then Safari is a must. So that begs the question, where am I at? What browser am I using? And I'm actually using both because there are still some extensions that I just need from Chrome that I can't let go of, like TubeBuddy for YouTube. But considering that I only use it once per week, for the other 99% of things that I do, I've basically completely switched back over to Safari just because of how much value it provides. And just like Safari could provide you a lot of value, if this video has provided you any value, it would really help my channel if you left a like and even subscribed if you want more videos just like this one. More videos are on the way, so hit the bell icon if you don't want to miss them. I'm Matt, and thanks for watching.